So uh, who we are, basically, my name's Mark Phillip, and I kind of already said this, but I'm an application engineer for uh, Studica, and um, Jennifer Lewin is one of my colleagues. She's a sales representative, and uh, she'll be kind of taking over the last portion of the presentation for me. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the game industry in general. Um, video gaming is has evolved quite a bit since the 80s or even back in the 70s in the Atari days. It's now become a multi-billion dollar industry uh, that rivals the film and movie industry. Um, some of the figures I want to go over here are, uh, this is from the Entertainment Software Rating Board, the ESRB. Uh, they rate video games on, you know, mature ratings or teen ratings, kind of like PG, PG-13 rated R from the MPAA. That's basically what the ESRB does, and they gather data about video games and uh, game players. And uh, one statistic I really thought was interesting was 67% of U.S. households play video games. Now, I went to the Census Bureau and looked up uh, how many households there are in the U.S. There's roughly 114 million. If you take 67% of that, uh, that's roughly 70 million uh, households that have video games these days, and uh, that's pretty significant. So that's a giant market, and... Uh, there's a reason why the industry pulls in roughly $10 billion of revenue every year. Um, now, these this number is from 2009, uh, $10.5 billion in revenue. As I've heard, it's only gone up since 2009. The game industry has not been heavily affected by the recession, uh, as some other industries have. <clears throat> uh, when you compare $10.5 billion to the film industry in 2009, it's very close. The film industry pulled in and box office uh, ticket sales $10.65 billion, but it's actually declined since then. And in 2012 so far, they're expecting $10.1. So games actually might beat out films in terms of uh, revenue this year. And um, I think that's pretty significant because it means that there's a lot of money to be had in the video game industry. And in high school, you try and get your students interested in something that they really want to go into. And... Uh, it's optimistic and uh, hopeful when you see that the industry is not just a niche industry anymore, that it actually has a lot of power and has a lot of uh, ability to employ people. So that's why games are important now, especially in high school, to really give the skills necessary to your students to uh, hop into that game market or hop into a game design curriculum in a upper, in a, uh, sorry, in a college setting. Um, some of the other figures I wanted to talk about were the average salary for direct employees in the entertainment software industry. Um, the average salary people are making there is $92,000 roughly. Um, and this is from the Entertainment Software Association, which is uh, really renowned. So, you know, that's pretty significant income, especially when you look at other uh, career areas. And, uh, you know, direct employees could be just about anything. You could be a programmer, 3D modeler, game designer, uh, producer. I mean, if you if you ever play a modern video game these days and you look at the list of credits, it's, it's as long as, you know, the list of credits for, say, The Dark Knight, like a big blockbuster movie. Uh, video games have become very uh, substantial and very in-depth, and, and it requires a lot of people now, which is why there's even more and more jobs opening up. And... Uh, you know, in 2009, they put out the figure that uh, the game industry will support over a quarter of a million of American jobs. Now, uh, I think last I heard they're expecting up to 400,000, if not 500,000 uh, jobs in 2012. So that number just keeps going up. And it's a place where, you know, the industry keeps expanding and getting larger. And uh, now is a better time than any to, to start students at an early age to get into this industry, especially if it's something they're interested in. Um, I know I myself, I took computer science courses in high school, uh, and I loved video games, and I really wanted to get into it, but um, it's very difficult to come from no programming background to just hopping into C++ and some of these higher end programming languages to try and make a, uh, a video game, and it requires a lot of math, and it, it's, it's very difficult, but if you're really into it, and if your student's really into it, the, they'll definitely be interested in you know, taking it by the horns and just uh, getting it and doing it the way they want. Um, but that kind of brings me to my next point. The software I'm going to be talking about today is called Unity. And Unity is a uh, game design uh, engine 
or video game engine you should be able to see it here I don't really have anything going on yet but uh, what unity does for people is basically makes it a lot simpler to design a game from the ground up um, instead of just doing all programming all the time you actually this is much more drag and drop oriented where there is some scripting involved um, this is a great way in my opinion to teach uh, students how to get into game design and to learn the concepts behind game design and kind of the logic that you have to apply to it um, I mean because I, I I've tried making games in the past using just all programming C++ and Java and when I first got a hold of unity I couldn't believe how simple it made some of these you know how simple it just made things to uh, for you to, to just start a game from the ground up um, now Unity is compatible on uh, Mac and PC, and uh, the system requirements can be found on their web page. I won't go too in depth on that, but um, I want to talk about how Unity is used in the game industry. Uh, for one, it's it's a very cheap game engine compared to uh, many of the other big ones, uh, such as the Unreal Engine or some of these other uh, game engines out there. And Unity is widely used, especially in the cell phone gaming market, where there's where we've seen a lot of money coming in from uh, but that doesn't mean unity is limited to cell phones it can be on any platform uh, this is a game list from unity's website of some of the stuff that's been made you can make them for web the iPhone iOS or iPad uh, Android system for your uh, PC Mac Linux uh, you can even build games for the Wii the PS3 marketplace and the Xbox 360 marketplace and uh, all these platforms you can actually make money off of if you choose to sell your game. Um, but this is just some of the many games that have been made on, on Unity's engine. I know like uh, Blood and Glory is an you know, uh, iPhone, I, uh, Android game. Most of these are Android iPhone games, but the interesting thing is that the game industry is really making a shift. The mobile gaming platforms are kind of becoming the standard now. And... Um, you know, 360 and PS3 and some of these games, you're seeing a lot of the real big studios making games for them. But for the independent developer and maybe the student, Unity is a great way to learn how to make a game and design something you really want to make and then put it out on an independent marketplace like uh, the Android Marketplace or the uh, Apple, uh, the App Store from Apple. And uh, your students can even, if their game's good enough and if they get it out there enough and people like it, they could even make some money off of it. So um, that's just some of the ways Unity is being used in the game industry. It's a very good way to just get people into game design and understanding the concepts. Uh, now, that being said, I kind of want to just do a quick demo on uh, Unity and kind of just show you what you can do here. Um, I'll try to keep it not too technical. But uh, I kind of have a habit of doing that sometimes. So uh, basically in Unity, it kind of looks like your typical 3D animation software. If you're used to using Maya or 3ds Max or anything like that, uh, you have your viewport here. And then uh, your hierarchy is where all your objects in your viewport will be. And uh, your project folder is basically all your assets you can drag and drop into your game. Now, um, all these things you can import your own stuff into unity if you make a model in Maya or 3ds max or anything like that you can bring that into unity and uh, pop it into your game and you can use that model now within your game to do something with it um, the interoperability is pretty uh, expansive with unity and that's one of the really good things about it um, but what I'll do is um, the main thing that really makes unity so simple to understand in my mind is it uses something called game objects and a game object is basically it can be anything it, all it means is it's just an empty spot in 3d space but unity makes it easy because game objects for instance if I make a cube here you can apply all sorts of things to it like a mesh you can add colliders just by clicking just a one button solution which to me is amazing because I tried doing collision data and programming and it blew my mind but unity does that for you so it makes it much simpler um, but with this box you know I'm just gonna turn it into some sort of small platform we can move on here and um, just make that a little bit bigger so I have basically a platform I can draw here and uh, now I want to just go ahead and drop a 
controller on it, which will allow me to play the game from a first person view. Now these are just built in things in Unity. Now the controller is just a capsule right now, but this is kind of how you would normally build your game up front. It would just be to use placeholders like this, and then later on you could turn that mesh into an animated figure that you did up in Maya or Max. So now I have um, these guys here, and all I did was drag and drop a couple things. Uh, it's very simple. Um, I can play test my game, and I can actually move around. Everything's really dark, but that's because I don't have a light source. But that's a that's really easy too, because a light source is just a game object, and I can create a directional light. And zoom out here. I can move it and uh, rotate it. Make sure it's shining on my uh, my character here. And now when I play, I actually have light. Now nothing's textured or anything, so it's just a bunch of gray meshes everywhere. But the fact is I created a simple platform and I was able to bring a first-person controller in in like two minutes. I mean, if you were to try and do that from the ground up with programming, it'd probably take you two days unless you really know what you're doing. So Unity makes it really easy to hop in and start doing some of these concepts. Now... Um, you know, like this box has a collider on it by default, but if I turn this collider off and I start my game, my guy's just going to fall through that world and, you know, just keep falling forever. So I can turn those colliders back on. I can add colliders for different um, shapes, like boxes and things. And uh, to me, that's just a big thing because collision is so important in games. If you have something collide and nothing happens, then you're not really going to have a game. Because in most games, say you shoot a fireball at something and it hits a wall, you want something to occur. You don't want the fireball to just fly through it. So collision is really integral in making your game not only feel real, but look real. And uh, that to me is a really cool feature and it's really simple. And just the fact that game objects can be used in such a way that you can apply scripts to them. Uh, you know, you can apply certain meshes to them. You can do so many things to a game object to, to really turn it into anything you want, which is what's so cool about video games, is you can do anything you want as a game designer. Um, and what I want to talk about a bit was the scripting in Unity. Um, of course, game design, there's going to be some programming no matter what, but Unity kind of makes it real simple because it handles so much of the engine within itself because Unity is a game engine. So really, if you're using Unity, all you're doing is utilizing the tools that Unity has given you, which makes it a lot easier because if you're to build an engine from the ground up, it takes a very long time. And, and most big studios, uh, such as EA, for instance, probably the biggest game developer, they always buy engines from people uh, to use because it costs so much time and money to make your own engine from the ground up. So that's why Unity is really cool, is you don't have to worry about the engine. It's already there, and you can just start using it and uh, learn your way around it. But with my first-person controller, you know, say I want to add a function for it to uh, shoot a fireball. Well, I already have a script here I made up called Projectile. If I click on it, the programming's over here. But if I double-click on it, it's going to open up in Unity's script editor called MonoDevelop. And... Um, in this developer you can you know go through your code and everything now unity can be programmed in c-sharp uh, javascript but the javascript is kind of more of unity's javascript it's sort of a modified version of it so if you do hop into unity and start doing the programming uh, there's probably going to be a little bit of a learning curve if you're used to using normal java because it's kind of a little bit different than normal java but um, you know, Mono Develop is Unity's code editor, and you can do all your coding in here. And then when you save it, that code gets applied to your scripts folder in your project. And then you can just drag a script onto, say, my main, or sorry, that was the wrong move. I can drag the projectile script onto the first person controller, and I can create an empty game object to serve as a spawn point so I know where I want a fireball to shoot out of. Let me rename this. Let's 
sorry, let me drop this on my camera. And, um, and then on my projectile, my script is basically looking for an object to shoot out. So I already have some made here, so I can just grab my fireball and throw it onto uh, the script. And then hopefully when I play here, yeah, I can shoot a fireball now. Now it's kind of coming out of my face, but that's just because I positioned the spawn point wrong. So whenever I left click now, it shoots a fireball. And when I hit the ground, it explodes. So that's kind of the collision in action there. If it doesn't collide with anything, it just sort of keeps going forever. If I hit the ground, it explodes. And, um, you know, very basic, very primitive, but all games start off very primitive and you have to build them up. So, you know, it's uh, what I'm doing here is basically how you would kind of figure out the basic mechanics and then you would make everything look pretty by going into 3DS Max and Maya later and, you know, doing some stuff with it. But, um, Another thing I wanted to show off here was um, kind of level design, and I also wanted to show how you can bring uh, an object from 3D Studio Max into your scene. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up a test level, which is something I already had uh, created here. And um, I created this terrain that you see here within Unity itself using the terrain editor. Uh, now, some people like the terrain editor, some people would rather do all the levels and all the modeling in a uh, separate program like 3D Studio Max or Maya, um, which is, you know, that's probably the best practice, so you, you can do some real detailed uh, modeling and make it look really nice, but Unity does have built-in functionality for creating levels like this, and um, I haven't done too much to it, I've just kind of created some mountains, etc., but I did that really quickly. It's very easy to do. Um, but if I zoom in on my controller here, and I have this box that I can shoot around. Here's kind of what I'm working with. You know, I can shoot this box, and it goes moving around. Nothing too fancy, but uh, I program the physics into the box and you know the way it behaves when it gets hit by the fireball and everything like that. Um, and it interacts with the environment. It will roll down the hills and everything uh, like that. Um, what I want to do, though, is bring in a model from 3D Studio Max. Now, I was working in 3D Studio Max design to create a building. Um, I just had some real basic models here, and I'm just going to bring in this little twisty building I have here. So I'm just going to go ahead and export that as an FBX to, sorry, to my desktop real quick. I'm just gonna save as is, it's gonna tell me a few things failed. And then what I can do is import that object into my uh, project, my project here and then I can tell it to generate colliders for me so I don't have to worry about that. Give it a second and then I sh can drop that in here. Pivot points kind of off kilter. But I can drop this guy in here now and, and position him in the right area. So the workflow here is sort of just like any other 3D modeling application you may be used to. Um, so now my building's in there. Looks pretty out of place, but it is what it is. Um, so now if I run around, I can see that in my game. And uh, it generated its own colliders, so now I can hit that building and I could interact with it if I had some other... Uh, you know, like a door or something else, but it's a very basic model. Um, and I'm sure if any of you are used to using Maya or 3ds Max or anything, you can see the potential here. Uh, I can bring in just about anything. If you make a character, you could uh, bring him in and I could replace my first person controller. You know, it has a uh, 
the graphics have just a mesh on it and I could change that mesh up if I wanted to. Uh, you could import your own model in here and you could tell it to use your model instead of just this basic capsule. And then using scripts and everything, if you have um, like bone structure and everything added to your characters, you can use your scripts to access all of that and make your uh, and animate your character in an appropriate way. So, <clears throat> and it's very simple. Uh, Unity, I used FBX to bring this in, but it, it takes all sorts of uh, file formats like OBJs and uh, DAEs, and it even brings in uh, CAD models. If you use any CAD software like Revit or AutoCAD, you can bring in DWGs. Uh, or sorry, you can't bring in DWGs, but you can export those as um, FBX files and bring them into your uh, game here. So, and then I can I can also scale down my building, which is kind of lagging my computer, so I'll stop doing that. But um, next thing I kind of wanted to talk about is um, oh yeah, the ability to play test, which I've been doing. You know, I can click play up here at the top, and you can see right off the bat how your game's behaving. So if you make any changes, uh, you can, you know, test those changes out. You know, I can also, um, I can also dock these. So I have my game view on the right and uh, my scene view on the left. So now if I play my game view, I can kind of sit here, but then... If I go over here and say move this, sorry, it's two parts, but if I move everything here, then I actually see that update in my game. I kind of messed that all up, but you know, I can just undo. And when you stop playing, um, it will actually put things back to normal, but you can do all these play tests and see what works, what doesn't work. And for, for things like level design, that's really a, a, a beneficial feature because it's all about how it feels and how it you know, whether or not it puts you in the game or out of the game. So, you know, you want to make sure that's all proper. Um, but that's just some of the functionality here. And, uh, you know, it's very basic. But like I said, if you're a student, and uh, especially in high school, when, you know, students are probably really getting into this, into this kind of thing, this is a very beneficial tool. And it's very easy to start learning. Um, you know, I practically gave up on game design when I was in taking my computer science classes because I just said this is way too difficult. But um, since then, I've found programs like this, and it makes it so simple to get back into it that, um, and it makes it fun to get back into it rather than uh, uh, like a headache. You know, I mean, you run into so many issues with with running scripts and programming and things like that. But Unity makes it a lot simpler to do what you want to do in your game and, and the fact that it's just drag and drop is excellent and you know the even even down to mono develop their uh, script editor is really nice and uh, that kind of brings me to what I want to talk about uh, next is kind of the training resources but one more thing before I do that with your game depending on the licenses you purchase you can um, you can build your game to all sorts of things. You can use the Unity web player, which can be embedded onto websites. You may have actually seen it some places. A lot of people use it. Uh, you can export to a PC or a Mac. Um, you can export to Android, Flash, iOS, Xbox 360, PS3, Wii. I don't have the licenses for these, but uh, you know, you could build a game, like I'll take this for instance and hit build and run and just save it onto my desktop. And it's gonna go ahead and compile everything shouldn't take too long here and um, then you'll be able to play it and kind of the cool thing with this is uh, as a game designer you need to test your stuff on all sorts of systems to make sure you you minimize as many bugs as possible so the fact that you can just output your your product real quickly and you could pop down a flash drive and bring it to another machine or give it to a friend and ask them to try it um, you know I think that's really cool and it makes it very simple so if I go ahead and play this, it's got to boot up here, and we pretty much have my game in full screen, 1080p, and uh, my overly large building, but, you know, so now this is an actual executable running on my desktop, 
rather than within Unity. So like I said, if you wanted to uh, collaborate with somebody or, or test this on another system, it's just as easy as that, building it out and uh, doing so. And uh, you can do Android and you know, iOS and everything like that, and you could do the same thing. You can hook up your phone and uh, test it out on your Android system, and uh, it pretty much does all that for you. So it's really nice in that way. Uh, the thing I wanted to talk about is kind of training resources. Now, obviously, this is a bit overwhelming, especially if you haven't used it before. Uh, it took me, you know, about just probably just a couple of weeks of, you know, just learning it every day for a couple of hours to kind of get a grasp on what I was doing. Um, but the, the nice thing with Unity is it's part of the game design world. And the good thing about the game design world is it's highly based on collaboration. So there's so many things online that you can find about Unity and, and so many problems people have had or questions people have had and things that come up. And, and I, I guarantee you if you Google it or you just look for it, you're going to find somebody who has a solution for it because that's just kind of how the game design community is. It's very collaborative, which is also a, very, a big plus in a, in a high school environment when you're working with students um, because it, it gets them involved in collaborating with one another to create a game. And it's, uh, it's very difficult to create a game by yourself. With Unity, it's possible, but collaboration is typically what people you know, do in the game design industry. And so in your classroom, that would be a, a very fun thing to bring in, especially if you have, uh, say, Maya or 3ds Max or SketchUp or any of those 3D modeling softwares, because then you could kind of work with, uh, you know, your graphic design people and your game design people and let them work together. So your graphic design people get to create all these crazy characters or, um, you know, environments and buildings and things. They give them to the game design team, they throw them in their level, and they get a you know, work all that out. So it's very collaborative, and one that's one of the big benefits with Unity is it's it's widely used, so you can find all kinds of help online, um, you know, to help you out with any questions you might have. I kind of wanted to look at, um, you know, the documentation on Unity's own webpage. They have uh, tutorials, they have a forum, they have video tutorials, uh, they have example projects for you to look at. Um, they have a very comprehensive API, which is for the programming. So, you know, if you're uh, doing any of your scripts, uh, you can come here and find out what all the Unity Engine uh, methods and functions uh, mean. So, I know that might be jargon to some people, but, you know, this is very helpful to have, especially if you're doing some hardcore programming, because you can look up anything and, and find what it does for you. And uh, it's very comprehensive, and it's built into MonoDevelop directly, I think. And you can actually, yeah, look at the Unity API reference and find out what you know a rigid body does and what kind of commands it has associated with it. So it's very useful um, for people who are not only learning the programming but just trying to figure something out in your programming. Um, Unity also has uh, a couple of tutorials that are pretty in-depth. They're pretty long, and I think they're pretty excellent. Uh, there's one for a car game, you know, how to set up a, uh arcade-style racing game. And then there's also, like, a third-person view platformer game. Uh, you know, sort of like Super Mario, like Mario 64 or uh, Mario Sunshine or something like that. And then there's also uh, details for the iPhone development. Um, so they got, they got, you know, the three tutorials here are, are really in depth. And if you go through all of them, you'll really get a handle on unity and how to use it. And, uh, then they have other video tutorials. And I know just from personal experience, if you go to YouTube and type in unity 3d tutorials, you're going to find just a ton of stuff. And, and that's how I learned how to use the software. Mostly was, was watching all these YouTube videos people made and, uh, you know, and that kind of goes to my next point about just third party uh, training. You know, there's so many websites out there that are offering uh, free tutorials for this stuff. And it's to me, it's just such a great thing to be able to have such a powerful tool at your disposal, but also to have all the resources necessary to really learn that tool and learn how to not only teach it, but utilize it in your classroom. Um, 
and just you know last thing i wanted to reinforce was just the fact that game design thrives on collaboration and i think that's a great thing to bring into a classroom environment to uh, really teach your students to collaborate together and work together to you know finish a common uh, project or accomplish a common goal so um and with with the huge amount of training material online i think people i i, I think students will really be able to hop in and you know, just tackle this program and, and really start making a game. And typically people who are interested in game design are, are really gung-ho about it. And uh, a lot of the time they're, they're self-starters and they're really going to, you know, just grab the program and they're going to learn it in and out so that they can make the game they really want to make. So, um, you know, that's kind of the gist of what I wanted to go over here. Um, I think I'm actually going a little fast, but uh, what I wanted to hand over next was um, I wanted to let Jennifer Lewin kind of talk about the pricing of Unity and uh, go over some of the training resources. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Jennifer now. And then after she's done, we will go into a Q&A part and we can answer some of your questions. So uh, here's Jennifer. The conference is now in conversation mode. The conference is now in presentation mode. Good afternoon all, my name is Jennifer Lewin. I work as an educational sales representative for Studica Inc. For those of you who are not familiar with Studica, Studica has been an education source for software and technology products. Serving schools, educators, and students since 1985, offering many products at exceptional prices. Today I would just like to go over brief, go over some few imp Okay, Unity 3D and Autodesk in your classroom. Using Unity along with the Autodesk Entertainment Creation Suite or the Autodesk Design Software will provide your school with the tools needed to set up a video game design and development program. As you have seen from Mark's demonstration, you can very easily drag and drop any saved files or characters from 3DS Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, and many other programs. And Unity can read files, files such as .fbx, .dae, .3ds, and .dxf. So if your program can export to these formats, you're home free. Unity is the perfect add-on to your existing animation or design classes. Or if you wish, you can implement this program as a class by itself. As it is excellent for teaching game development, Unity will prep your students for the future in industry, going over topics such as design, development, 3D modeling, concept art, programming, audio, storytelling, just to name a few. Unity has 700,000 registered users, users, to name a few, Cartoon Network, Coca-Cola, Disney, Lego, Microsoft, Warner Brothers, NASA, Big Point, Nickelodeon, Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, large and small educational institutions. Unity actually won the Wall Street Journal 2010 for Technology Innovation Award in the gaming software category. Now I just want to take a look at a, a few of the prices here. The Unity Pro Game Academy is priced at an exceptional price for K-12 schools. It is sold in a 10 or a 25 pack bundle license including Unity Pro, Steam License, Android Pro, and iOS add-ons. We also offer this package in an annual term and perpetual license. Perpetual meaning permanent. The license will not expire. Here are some of our special price offers. We have the package for $9.99. It's a 10-pack annual term, which will include the Unity Pro, Team License, Android, and iOS. We also sell this in a 10-pack perpetual license for $2,495, which will include all of these units as well. Going on to, um, we also have the 25-pack in an annual term for $2,495 along with the 4,995 for the 25-pack permanent license. 
As a special promotional offer, we'd like to offer the educators a copy of the Unity Pro Game Academy for home use at an exceptional price of $299. This will be a one-year license including Unity Pro, Android Pro, Team License, and iOS, along with one month of free training from Digital Tutors. Tutica is offering one month, one month free of Digital Tutor with any Unity or Autodesk order. Digital Tutor has a dedicated team of artists, professionals, representatives, and problem solvers who are truly passionate about teaching the people around the globe who make movies and games. No matter your skill level or experience, you need an educational resource that helps you conquer complicated topics so you can focus on your future. So whether it's graduating from school, advancing your skill set, or getting a promotion. You can access the world's largest online computer graphics training library 24-7 and find the solution you are looking for in seconds with Digital Tutor. Some of their customers include companies like MTV, EA, Universal Studios, PBS, NASA, Pixar, and many more. Some promotional offers bundling Unity with the Autodesk animation and design software at an exceptional price. Allow us to quote you today and show you the value. As a follow-up to today's webinar, we will be emailing a link of the recorded session along with links to the products discussed today. I want to thank you all for attending today's webinar as I will now change the presenter to Mark Phillips who will answer any questions via chat. Have a great rest. The conference right, is now so in conversation that brought up one more thing I kind of wanted to mention was Unity is used the conference in, is um, now in presentation mode. Sorry, it is used in the game industry pretty widely. So, you know, you saw some of those people like EA, Ubisoft, NASA, etc. Um, really, it's a great tool to prepare your students to, to hop into the industry and, and get a job real, real quickly. So that's just one more thing I wanted to add. But um, we'll go ahead and do some uh, question and answer now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the chat because... Typically, when you unmute people, it gets really convoluted. So if you have a question, feel free to ask it in the chat menu on your Join Me, and we'll go ahead and try and answer these. So I got um, here, is it possible to use the evaluation tools to get going with the 3D environment? Um, I mean, school is beginning to get into game programming. I've been getting into it slowly to get proof of concept. Um, you can use the evaluation tools for learning purposes you know on your own but uh anything beyond that if you're going to use it at your school you do have to have a license from unity so but if you're trying to just get a basic idea of it and you're trying to understand it then there's no problem with that but just remember if you go to purchase in school um or sorry if you're going to be teaching it in your class you are going to have to get an educational license so i hope that answered your question um, let's see, we got, can you be used with Revit or Inventor? Uh, yes, it can, actually. There is, um, I actually had a project here somewhere where I did that. Uh, let me see if I've got it. Um, where am I at? No, I didn't. Well, I had one. It was, um... You can bring in, you can export from Revit as an FBX file, and I believe you can do so in Inventor. And uh, you can bring that FBX file into your, um, well, let me see if this works. Yeah, here we go. This is the basic project from Revit, the getting started project. I can bring that into Unity and drop uh, like my first person controller. Well, it's way out of whack, but. Um, I could drop a first-person controller in here and actually start walking around the house and everything like that. It's a really cool feature, especially if you're into the architecture side of things, um, to do interactive walkthroughs because you know, because uh, <laughs> you know that um, you know you can do walkthroughs in Revit, but compared to Unity, Unity offers so much more functionality with that. So. It's, it's a really cool tool to do that. And I've actually seen a couple of, uh, you know, firms are actually using that and embedding them on their website and things like that. So, yes, uh, in short, you can import models into Unity from Revit and Inventor. Uh, let me see. Man, there's a lot of questions. Okay. 
are there books to go along with this program? I honestly have not looked. I don't know if there's anything first party that's from Unity. Um, I'm sure there's books. If you go to Amazon or somewhere, I'm sure if you look for Unity, you'll find books on it. Um, you know, there definitely are tons of resources online. Uh, I'm, I'm positive there's books. I just don't know if there's any that are directly from Unity. So, you know, I would probably look around online and see what you can find. Uh, what do I recommend for pre as a students? Well, that's really hard to say. You know, every student's different. But um, definitely math uh, up to at least algebra, probably geometry. Um, you know, game design uses some very, especially when you get into higher level programming, it uses some very heavy mathematics. And if your students are really interested in going all the way in game design, they're going to want to really be up on everything, including calculus, trigonometry, and physics. Um, if you're doing introductory level, I think algebra geometry is probably fine uh, to get started because since the Unity engine does so much of the groundwork for you, you don't have to have as much of a knowledge. And they'll actually learn quite a bit of math just doing this sort of thing. Um, if they have any experience, they'll also want to have basic, you know, computer experience. I think most students nowadays are inundated with computers and technology very young, so I, I don't think that's much of an issue. But you're going to want to make sure they understand how to use Windows or the, the Mac OS X or whatever system you're working in. And, uh, you know, maybe some 3D modeling experience, but it really depends. If they're just interested in game design, they don't necessarily have to know how to use things like Maya and 3DS Max, but they'll probably want to understand the concepts about it, uh, such as XYZ coordinates and working in a 3D space. So, uh, but above all else, you just want to make sure they know their, their math pretty well. Um, <clears throat> so I, I hope that kind of answers your question. Uh, has this program ever been used in a middle school setting? I actually think I had somebody call me about that recently, and they are using it in their uh, middle school. I could be wrong, but um, it, it again, it kind of depends on your students. I know in middle school, uh, at least here in the United States, uh, I th a lot of people are, are taking algebra and things like that around that time. So, you know, if they're pretty far ahead then I think they could get a handle on it, but um, it's, re it's really, that's kind of hard to say for me. So <laughs> uh, definitely high school and definitely juniors and seniors, I think, will really grab onto this. Uh, freshmen, sophomores probably could too. Uh, middle school, hard to say. I mean, it really depends on, on what the kids are learning, um, but I, I think they could probably grab onto it, you know, but uh, especially if they're really into game design. Like if the student's really driven to get into that industry, I think they'll try really hard to, to understand it, and I think they'll make it work for themselves. So, um, you know, hopefully that kind of answers your question there. Uh, looking at some of these other ones, how nicely does a character rig made might import into Unity? Uh, me personally, I haven't done that, but from what I understand, Maya works almost seamlessly with Unity. You can drop in a character and, uh, you know, pr use your scripts to uh, make it animate the way you want and everything like that. Uh, most people, when I was going through tutorial videos, most people recommended using Maya for uh, Unity, but that doesn't mean you can't use something like 3ds Max or Blender or whatever. Um, but apparently you can drag and drop a, a Maya rig in pretty, pretty easily, just like I did with uh, some of these models. So uh, that's definitely within the scope of Unity's abilities. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Man, keep coming in. Is Google SketchUp the only program students are expected to use to make... Sorry, what was that? I keep losing it here. To make the ass art assets for the class or other others. Uh, no, you can use... Um, Beyond SketchUp, you can use uh, Sketchbook Pro, Maya, 3ds Max, um, Blender, Rhino. Uh, you can use all sorts of uh, anything that does 3D modeling. You can pop it in here. And um, for 2D, I know some people asked about two-dimensional games. Unity has a uh, asset package and API package that you can actually download to do 2D games. Uh, the main thing it focuses on is 3D, but you can do 2D, 2D games in Unity as well. 
Um, but yeah, for the Quest of Google SketchUp, it's not only limited to SketchUp. I mean, pretty much any 3D modeling software that can export FBX uh, can move into Unity. Um, let's see, I have some Scratch and Kudo Masters testing Unity now. Seventh and eighth graders, they're doing okay. So that's what one person said about middle school. So that question about middle school, um, apparently Viewer76 is testing it in his 7th and 8th graders, and they're doing pretty good, so that's good to hear. Uh, does the design curriculum jump straight into video games? Doesn't need to go through a board game card. Yeah, the uh, the tutorials Unity has is basically stumps right, jumps right into video games. Um, I know typically in programming courses, you start off with things like uh, programming a card game or uh, you know some sort of gambling or random number generator. And those are programming concepts that I definitely think are important. But Unity itself kind of hops you right into the the pro uh, sorry right into the game design end of it. Um, so it might it would probably be important for your students to have some programming knowledge, but it's not out of the question to really learn your programming from Unity. And in fact, I've looked around online and read forums of people who are like 14 and they say I didn't know anything about programming and, until I used Unity and they started learning it so the thing with Unity is you can really see your results instantly in a visual way and I think that's really motivating for students who are who are learning the programming up front because programming can be really frustrating you know if you keep getting compiling errors and stuff and you never really see your end product so usually people especially young people get really excited about this program because it's presented in such an easy to use way and the programming is just something they feel they just have to learn and they, they tackle it really well so you know I, I think that's um, I hope that kind of answers your question uh, basically the curriculum does just jump into video games doesn't quite go over the programming so as a teacher you're probably gonna need to know some programming to kind of help the students understand it as well if they don't um, would you recommend using Unity for my engineering program? Well, I guess it really depends what you're doing. Um, it's, it, in my mind, it's really beneficial for things like architecture because you can design a building and do an interactive walkthrough and uh, you know really show that off as uh, an engineering program. Like if you're using Inventor to make parts and uh, um, you know mechanical devices. Uh, Unity could be used in a way that you could bring those parts into a scene and uh, you could use them in an interactive way. You know, you might be able to program certain things about it. Say your part has like a on switch or something and you could tell it within Unity that unless the on switch is pressed, you know, it doesn't animate in a certain way. Uh, in an engineering situation, I don't know if it would be as valuable as an architecture situation. Um, you know, I hope that kind of answers it. I, I would probably Google up on that, kind of see what other people do with it um, in the engineering discipline and kind of, you know, go from there. Um, let's see, what is the scope of the games the students will be designing? Uh, scope being, since scope is open, then you can give an example of an existing game. Okay. Um, really the scope is pretty endless it just the tools here can really can go very far um you know i've seen people uh there's a website called 3dbuzz.com i know they were doing an entire tutorial series on how to make a massively multiplayer online rpg which is like you know you've probably heard of world of warcraft or uh, star wars knights of the old republic or not knights of the uh, the old republic which is the new one i mean these are very large games with huge worlds with tons of players with uh com with network communications between servers and clients so much stuff but you can actually do something like that within unity it might take a long time but if you're you know if you're if you're aiming to design something that expansive then you already know it's going to take you some time so really the scope of unity is is very far it's, it's basically endless i mean it's a game engine so it, the sky's the limit more or less um you know, especially at the price point. I mean, you could go with the Unreal Engine, but you're going to be paying seven figures to get that, you know, and that's going to be, that's what like Gears of War was made on and everything, which is 
awesome, but it, it, it's only for commercial game developers, really, like EA, who have a lot of money to spend on it. Um, but Unity will be able to do pretty much anything you want to do. Um, let me see some of these other ones. Is it possible to create navigational consoles in a game dev environment? I'm not quite sure I know what you mean by that. Um, navigational consoles. Uh, you know, something like that. I guess uh, you can email me and ask me more scope, and I can try and answer that a little bit better. Um, for now, I'll kind of skip that. Um, are there more basic gaming software for beginners? Not that I've seen. Uh, I've heard of some stuff like that that works in HTML5 to make games, um, which may be a little easier, but I mean, for beginners, really, this is pretty excellent. I mean, I, I, I know enough with Unity to make a whole game out of it, um, and it took me only a couple of weeks to really learn. I had some programming knowledge, but that's about it. I'm not much of a 3D modeler or anything like that. Um, Compared to some of the other stuff I've seen, Unity is very simple to use. And for introductory game design, I don't think there's really anything better. Um, I know it seems kind of complicated, but game design is a complicated field. It, it, it takes a lot of math and a lot of... Uh, you got to think really logically and break things down. There's a lot of puzzle solving too, especially when you get into scripting and programming. So... Um, you know, to answer your question, I, I, I would say Unity is probably the best. Um, there may be others, but I haven't seen them or heard them. So um, let's see here. Digital series. Uh, um, what knowledge preparation level should the class instructor possess? Um, if you're looking to teach some sort of game design course, uh, having knowledge in game design would be beneficial, but... Uh, the big ones to me would be good mathematical knowledge as well as some programming knowledge or computer science knowledge. Um, you know, if even if uh, even though Unity, actually, from what I've heard, you can use C++ in Unity, but I know a lot of people are trained in C++ and Unity primarily uses JavaScript. But if you know C++, you'll get used to JavaScript real quick because it's also an object-oriented programming language. So very like a lot of it's very similar. Uh, so if you as an instructor are, uh, you know, well-versed in C++ or, uh, I mean, really any programming language like VB or anything, you should be able to hop in and, and do Unity pretty quick. Um, the other thing, that, like I was saying, is math knowledge. You're probably going to want to have some pretty good knowledge of mathematics, uh, you know, and if, you, if you're going into higher-end game development, you're going to want to know physics, too, uh, just so you can, you know, program things the way you want them to, to work, but... I hope that kind of uh, answers your question there. Um, explain the massive project again. Okay, uh, that was what I was talking about. Was there's a website called 3dbuzz.com? I think it's 3dbuzz.com. If not, just Google 3D Buzz. <clears throat> um, it's just a couple of guys who do all these tutorial videos for all kinds of software. It's basically where I learned how to do most of my stuff on Unity. But they were doing a um, an entire how to build an MMORPG from the ground up. And uh, just one more time, an MMORPG is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Like, uh, you know, the big game like World of Warcraft or EverQuest or Star Wars The Old Republic. And, um, you know, all I was saying was that those games are real expansive and very complicated and, you know, they, they utilize every aspect of game design. And, um, you know, these guys on this 3D Buzz site were actually able to do one from the ground up. So, you know, that was in reference to the scope of Unity, like how far you can take it. Um, you know, really, you can make an MMO out of it, and that's pretty impressive. So, uh, again, that's 3dbuzz.com, and they were doing something there for an MMORPG project. So that was just for the viewer asking about that. Um, was the necessary basic hardware for this to happen? Let me find out real quick. I don't know the uh, system requirements off the top of my head. Uh, 
So that's basically it right there. Um, I'll kind of just leave that up. I won't go over all of it, but, you know, so you can look at that. Um, okay, well, I think I got to the end of the questions here. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. we still got three minutes officially. Um, include this info in the info we get. You mean the uh, system requirements? Yeah, sure, we can do that. Um, I could send this over to, to Jennifer and make sure it gets out. Um, and, uh, you know, we're coming to the end here. So if you guys have uh, any other questions or anything, feel free to uh, contact us. My contact info is here middle on my screen. Uh, email is probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. I don't know about Jennifer, but, um, you know, you can take our info down. If you have any other questions or anything like that, feel free to let us know. Uh, I've recorded this whole thing, so I'll be putting this on YouTube, hopefully, and we can send you all the link if uh, any of you missed out on part of this. Uh, okay, one more question here. Um, what is the minimum of a video card that you'd really recommend? Um, I always recommend, I mean, video card-wise, I mean, they change every year, you know, but I always recommend um, PCI Express 2.0 X16 slot um, with 512 megabytes at least. Uh, you know, most cards now are like a gig of video RAM, uh, especially the new ones from NVIDIA and ATI, but you'd probably only need 512. Um, if that, it really depends what you're doing. If you have a lot of really complicated models and you're doing all kinds of crazy uh you know effects and things like that on your models then it could really start lagging and if you start putting together real big levels and all kinds of particle effects you might start getting some video lag um but you know i best rule of thumb is just any decent like mid-range card or, or you know lower mid-range card from ati or nvidia will probably do you pretty well yeah we can do that um does it say here no, it doesn't tell you what video card, huh? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll work that up and send that to Jennifer. Um, I assume you can use it for developing interactive curriculum. Uh, I think I understand that question. Um, you mean like uh, developing something within Unity to help teach the concepts of Unity to the students? Um I believe, yeah, I mean, you could do something like that if you, uh, if you, if you can figure a way to do it. I mean, well, yeah, if, if you, uh, you know, interactive curriculum, I mean, depending on whatever you're doing, you, you could really do anything with unity. So, um, I can't really think of a good example here, but I mean, you can drop anything into unity or make anything and, and turn it into your own if you wanted. So, uh, if you want to make some sort of educational game, uh, I don't know, about, you know, trigonometry or something, uh, you could probably do that. You would just have to come up with a creative way to do it within Unity, and uh, you would just have to know how to use the program, but I, I'm certain that's something you could do. Um, let's see... Is there any industry standard assessment that students can take at the end of the course? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not too sure. I can look into that, and um, well, if you shoot me an email, I can look into that and get back to you. Uh, I don't know if there's like a Unity licensing program. Oh, well, Viewer75 says they're working on one. But, uh, you know, but the thing is, I mean, Unity is used in a lot of industries. Um, you know, and, and, and major developers. So, you know, as long as you know your stuff in Unity and you can prove that as a, you know, as a potential employee, I think you could probably find a job. Uh, and if Unity's working on certification, that's even better. So, you know, um, but yeah, about the video card, somebody, some people are saying it's, you only need 64 megs. Um, I don't even know if you can find a 64 meg card on the market anymore, but, uh, you know, I mean, 512, I always just recommend 512 for future-proofing your machine. You know, that seems to be the, the standard right now is about 512 for most software. 
you know, to, to run smoothly and, and still maintain functionality, say three or four or five years from now. So, um, you know, you could also, I mean, you could use an onboard graphics card too. It's just going to run a little choppier. Um, you know, just if you want that good performance, you're going to want some kind of dedicated video card from ATI or NVIDIA. Um, so, uh, looks like I don't have any other questions here unless somebody else wants to chime in. Well, okay, well, it looks good. And uh, again, if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to contact us. Here's my contact info. Um, you know, and we can uh, help you out. So uh, I hope it's been informational. And uh, we'll also, like I said, we're recording this and we'll put it up on YouTube, hopefully, and send you all the link if you need to uh, review it. So uh, thank you for showing up and coming out and feel free to get in touch with us if you guys need anything. So thank you.